What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man with my esteemed co-host Isaac from Hunger Smash Fitness, and we're back with episode nine of Strong and Stronger, pushing our uh, women's empowerment movement here and kind of bringing attention to all of the most accomplished women in in strong men and strong women. And this week is no different. We have three really true legends of the sport: Lauren Wells, Jessica Fithin. And Haley Randall, welcome to the three of you. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Hello. So uh, let's, for, for people that are living under rocks, let's do some introductions. Uh, Lauren, would you like to kind of introduce yourself, brag a little bit about your accomplishments? Sure. Uh, uh, my name is Lauren Wells. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I like long walks on the beach. Um, <laughs> let's, I know. Uh, and hate those. Love, um, <laughs> hate those. And it's awful. Um, yeah, so as far as accomplishments, um, this year I earned my pro card in Strongman Corp, uh, came in third at Nationals, and then in 2019, um, I won USS Pro Women's World Heavyweight, and I came in second at that Nationals, too. Nice. Awesome. Nice. 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 Accomplishments. Accomplishments. <laughs> And nice. so, Haley, kind of, you and I crossed paths in, a, in an mm -hmm. interesting way. I was actually, you know, I'm really proactive about trying to find new subscribers, followers, people who might be interested in the content. And I ran across your husband, Derek. And uh, yeah. I was kind of like, you know, he looked pretty jacked and accomplished. And I'm like, hey, you want to come on the show anytime? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm an old coach now. You really want my wife. So I'm like, oh, who's your wife? And he said, Haley Randall. Shit, everybody knows Haley yeah. Randall. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's kind of how we cross paths. I, I first saw you when I was watching an Arnold with you, Andrea, and Kristen doing amazing deadlifting. And uh, so talk a little bit about kind of your background in, in Strongman. You did powerlifting as well, right? And, and uh, your accomplishments. Yeah, so uh, I started competing in strength sports around four or five years ago, um, but I did powerlifting for a couple uh, years first. Um, and I broke a lot of like Canadian powerlifting records. I still have the Canadian deadlift record, like powerlifting style, I guess. Um, and then I started competing in strongman about three years ago. Uh, I also just got my pro card this past year. Uh, I got mine through the Canadian uh, CASA circuit. I won Canadian nationals, so that's how I got that. Um, and then I have gotten eighth at the uh, world's strongest woman for the last two years. So, oh, and I think I still have the Axel deadlift world record, but I'm sure I think you do. I do not have it anymore <laughs> shortly. <laughs> but for now, I still have what, it. What is that again? Is it 574? Yeah, that sounds right. It's either 574 or 584. Imagine yeah. having so many records you can't even really keep track of. <laughs> Must be nice. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I was trying to make. <laughs> I'm sure it's on a website somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, somewhere. It's Googleable. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, speaking of records, Jessica just picks the weirdest, hardest implement there is and breaks Mauser block records. So why don't you talk about your background a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The key to getting lots of records in strongman is to find the like super niche thing that no one's doing and just do that a lot. And so then you get all the records for it. It's really great. It's really great. Uh, so I've been strongman six years. Um, have a handful of of titles to my name. Um, I won the Arnold Amateur. I've won Strongest Woman in the World. I've won America's Strongest Woman. I've come in. Uh, I won USS Nationals. Um, official Strongman Games. I've come in fourth two years in a row, which is really hard. I don't know if people know that or not. <laughs> that is very difficult to do that. Now, to be you know that you know consistent year after year is pretty is pretty good. So, and then I came in third at the Arnold Pro for the first time. Um, got on the podium with the Arnold Pro last year, but. I like to press, and so all of the all of the pressing records are usually on my on my radar. So that's kind of what I'm known for. Is. Yeah, so. speaking of pressing, you're going for a circus dumbbell record pretty soon at Clash on the Coast. Did you yeah, know what happened so. to Sam? About two weeks. Yeah, about two weeks. We're supposed to um, give it a, a go for the, the the circus dumbbell record. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll yeah, see. I mean, did did you see you Sam? Did you see what happened that's to Sam? Go. Did I see what? Did you see what happened to Sam recently? Yeah. <laughs> I heard she got hurt. Yeah. With the yeah. axle. She was, uh, she, she dropped an axle on her quad. I think. Oh, I've done that. Oh, it's not broken, is it? 
No, I don't think, I mean, the way she phrased it, she said, I'm lucky, the doctor said, I'm lucky, I'm only on crutches. So it yeah. sounds like maybe she's out for this, but not for too long. So hopefully yeah. not. Yeah. 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 That's awful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually just interviewed her and Maxime last week. So like, yeah. you know, it was so nice. I felt bad when I saw that. Yeah. Oh. Injuries yeah. That always suck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jess, it's all yours then. Uh, One eighty-five, right? You're gonna just I mean, yeah, that's the that's the goal for it. So we'll go and see. We, we we attempted it last year at the Arnold when they did the Arnold Record Breakers. Um, I have a bum right elbow, so this time I'm trying to on oh, my left. So it's uh not fun to learn how to press on your non dominant <laughs> side. By the way, not not fun at all. So <laughs> it's been kind of a learning experience to kind of learn how to do everything um, as consistently on the side that you don't use usually near your max attempt. So it's been almost like training a new event for me. So it's gone. Okay. It's going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I mean, from an audience perspective, people look at you and say like, Oh, she's so good that she can do it with her off arm. Not like that at all. No, it doesn't go like that at all. It's a whole lot of uh, throwing and screaming at stuff and like, <laughs> Instagram, you know, people are always like, I'll show you my fails. I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to show you my fails. No, not um, these ones. No, no, I have my best, my best face on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cerberus does that a lot, right? Like, why are they showing yeah. these fails? <laughs> yeah, that's not motivating to me. <laughs> I see that every day. It's just like, scary. I don't like watching other people. I do that all the time. Right? I don't need to watch other people. <laughs> ah, I can yeah. just go my own and watch right. myself. I can watch my own that. reels. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, so Haley, when I was talking to Derek, I was like, oh, like the, the deadlifting phenom. And he's like, well, she's much more well-rounded than that. So talk about everything else you do well, please. I don't know why he said that, because I don't know. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I have been working, obviously, ever since I started Tron, and I've been really working hard on all my other events. And I'm getting to the point where I've got some other stuff that I'm good at. I have a really good squat if a strongman competition ever had one, but I've never done a strongman competition with a squat yet. So fingers uh, crossed. But my pressing is doing something finally this season going up. So generally that's an event that uh, I zero or, you know, if I manage not to zero, it's not great, especially like at this next level. So I'm hoping um, this year I can make up some ground there, but I'm pretty decent at moving events, even though like I look really stupid when I'm doing them. <laughs> I do end up doing them okay. <laughs> oh, and I can't, oh, I'll be kicked out of Canada, which never mind. We're not talking about the situation. Okay. But if I don't mention my grip strength, I, I have pretty good uh, grip events. <laughs> I guess. Cool. And, and did I read correctly that you had a baseball background before powerlifting? Yes. Oh, yeah. Big time. I uh, I played travel baseball my entire life growing up, and I actually played in the Little League World Series when I was uh, ages, I guess, 12 to 16. Uh, I got to go do that pretty much every year. So I took it really, really seriously at the time. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, kind of another thing that – so. Different athletes have different approaches to events and yours is, I would, I would use the word intense. Like when you, when you deadlift, like you seem to go into a zone. Is that something like, yeah, and you yeah. seem to do, you seem to do it in, in the gym too. Like, is that something you've built yeah. up over the years or what, what's that all about? I wouldn't say I built it up over the years, but I've definitely like learned to, I guess, channel it over the years. Like I used to just kind of, you'll still see people who have really great intensity, but they're kind of new and they just go in like a wrecking ball and it either works or it like totally, totally, totally backfires. That's more how I was. Um, now, like, yeah, usually I can get myself into a really good headspace like a couple minutes before without totally just losing it and going nuts. But uh, yeah, the intensity does really help, I guess, once I learn to to channel it, but <laughs> there was a while where it was probably doing more harm than good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from a from a spectator's point of view, it's very convincing. I'm like, oh yeah, she's gonna lift that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it's more about. You make it. Yeah. <laughs> so she Lauren, almost what's... had it. Look how intense she was. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Lauren, what's your favorite event? 
Um, uh, my favorite, most common event is stones. Um, I love playing with rocks. It's just so thrilling. <laughs> um, but actually, one of my favorite ones is the Steinborn squat. But no one ever does that. I love, I love that. Event. Stop it's shaking so your fun. head. I, I love that move. It's so no, you ever you ever talk to uh, John Greaves from Garage Gym Life Media? He's into all the old time lifts. He would he'd have um, a great conversation with you. I'm I'm gonna have to reach out to him. I think I follow him. Um, I've tried reaching out to whoever manages um, those records in the United States, and um, I haven't got an answer back because I'm trying to set it up to where I can break the record. Um, but is there a record? Is there There's a record? record. Yeah, it's 285 really? for uh, my weight class. I forgot how it was broken up. Did you get like a contest somewhere? You like the way that they explained it to me was um, it you could either have a like standalone event, which I was trying to do with uh, coordinate with my gym because we have an event every year. Um, yeah. Or if I found you know one like Rogue ever did theirs again, I could I could do it at that. Um, but I need to at least get the sanctioning body to you know. Yeah. Emails. Yes, hey right. guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, hey. Um, hey guys. I that. would like to do things and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. No, I so, love, awesome. Uh, I, I love stones. Stones are probably my favorite event. Yeah. I was gonna say I don't know if our uh, if our live stream is big enough yet where they actually pay attention to us, but maybe <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, frame, we right. can get to that point and then they'll yeah. rewatch. So. All right, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. You want me to bug some people? I'm not afraid to do that on DMs. Man, go for it. It's fine. Go for it. I appreciate you it. See, you send me a list of names. I'll get. <laughs> oh, this could be dangerous. I got you. <laughs> so, uh, stones, Atlas stones only. You like natural stones? Work with kind of all of them. I've always wanted to uh, play with natural stones. Uh, we had one at the gym, but it died. Actually, um, it became two smaller stones. Oh. Um, yeah, <laughs> so uh, we just started doing double presses with it, but um, no, I, I, Atlas Stones that, that's kind of the uh, the event that kind of got me started and, and interested. That was the one that struck me, and still your favorite today. Oh, yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah. yep. I had the same situation with a natural stone on my yard, I dropped yeah. it on the sidewalk in two it's, stones. It's really sad, it's saddening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, you want to you want to talk about stones? You're pretty good at stones yourself, aren't you? I uh, I love stones. Um, I mean, all my other lifts are mediocre at best, but I have, you know, I, I'm I'm six five and I've got like a seven foot something wingspan, and so stones stones are a piece of cake for me because I can, <laughs> I can wrap my arms twice around them. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I I I love stones. Uh, <laughs> That yeah, being tall with a wingspan and it making you good at stones just cuts like a knife because it just yeah. Does but not think work about how how <laughs> how pressing goes for him. His one, yeah. one press for him yeah, is probably it. about five whole minutes just to get to the top. Yeah. Oh, well, I know. I have the wingspan. It just does not translate into anything when it comes to stones. No, I <laughs> like, by far my worst event. Like, oh man. Yeah. Um, I just cannot yeah. embrace the pain. I just can't do it. I just hate oh, it. It's so much fun. <laughs> pain in the arms, and then there's pain in the everywhere. Just everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Yeah, what the thing a... about Atlas Stones, I think most people don't realize that I've learned from guests, is it, it's not just the lifting, it's the squeezing. Mm. And uh, yeah. I think a lot, of, a lot of, like, Laymen don't understand that. Yeah. I think the first it's time I full body. Yeah, the first time I tried it, I didn't realize. Um, but like my chest was really sore afterwards. And I was like, this is crazy. Right. <laughs> no. All right. Try being a woman and strong man and talk to me about all the things that you have to do with your chest. Yeah. Right. right. We're We're constantly constantly feeding on our love pillows. Yeah. That is that is a the main thing I hate about stones. The part yeah. where you have to yeah. roll it over your knees, right roll your boobs, right over. Them. I uh, I don't have that problem. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I, I not not quite like you guys. Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's not well, fun though. It yeah. does work well for like, a lot, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's free. Hold it pretty much. Just for that. Front rack for real. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like belt clean part two, then you rest it up here. Oh, it's true. It's true. Don't get, don't get a start. <laughs> so, Lauren, uh, to go back a little bit, uh, how did you get into the Steinborn squat? Um, how did I get into it? I think uh, someone brought it up, like, let's try the Strongman Saturday one day. And um, I did. And I really liked it. I was really good at it yeah. for some reason. So, <laughs> yeah, Ortiz Lisi's was doing those at a bunch of those. Yeah. Um, he did it at the, at the amateur. And then he did it at the CrossFit. Sorry, Rogue had a CrossFit Invitational, and they invited him to do that. That might have been like nineteen, either eighteen or nineteen, somewhere in there. That's I think it was nineteen. Okay. Yeah, I think so. That yeah. was the first time I ever saw one in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> For real? Yeah, I yeah. love the old lifts. I think they're cool. They, they are, are, and I think a promoter would like never do that in a show because they would call it too dangerous. And it's like yeah. compared to like all the other stuff that we do, like how is it any more dangerous than literally right. anything else? No, no, it's not. It's <laughs> really not. Yeah, it's one of those weird things they claim safety on, and we're like, I mean, have you seen some of this other stuff? Because pretty much, <laughs> oh man, it's terrible for you. It's a terror. I mean, it's, it's literally bad for you, what you're doing, honestly. So. Well, I mean, like Everything drop you an axle on yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you can drop so, anything on yourself. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. I was just don't hate that. Yeah. <laughs> you can drop one on your head. I was just telling somebody that one of the very first shows that I ever did it had this really energetic MC and he was like really playing into the crowd and stuff. And so he was like explaining to them like what we were doing while we were doing it, which which is great for the crowd who doesn't know what we're doing. But we were like lifting a frame or something. And he was like, and now this is a really horrible, compromising place for their body to be in. Let's see. And it was like all this <laughs> talk about how our spines were going to snap and like look at their back, look how bad that is. It was like on and on. <laughs> I'm going to hear this while I'm doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. The crowd loved it. You know, they didn't know if we were going to die or if, like, this, right. this spine, you know, shooting out of body. Turning and, around, and, dialing 911. Yeah. Like, as yeah. they're lifting the stone, they're like, oh, wow, her bicep's really in a compromised yeah. position like, right now. That's it. It was just like, oh, my God, dude, can you not, like, while we're doing this? <laughs> right. It was memorable, but for the wrong reasons. So, yeah. <laughs> Great. And now a message to our audience. We do not root for our athletes to die. We do not. <laughs> we do not. But we tape it and watch it in slow motion later on. Many times. Mm -hmm. And we play it over yeah. and over again. Right? <laughs> hey, Cole. Stop that. No. Sorry. I have a tough problem. Be quiet. <laughs> I know. It's good, though. <laughs> Now, I mean, speaking of dangerous events, what's the most dangerous event? I mean, I would say Mauser Block's pretty dangerous, but what are, what do you all think? That's pro that's probably the one I would pick. Yeah, uh, Mauser Block on an overhead is. I mean, as far as like, I don't want to say it's dangerous in the sense I don't like that word specifically because you know, you literally anything just like Sam. I mean, you you drop anything on you and it's bad. Like this is this is bad. So yeah. it's just a lot more um, finicky. For there's just a lot more. There's just a lot more injury. Yeah, so it's like the the risk of you of you dropping that on your head or your bicep or your hands or your leg is just really high. I don't know that anything is more dangerous than anything else. I can make any event dangerous. I can Actually, make the, the event I see the event where when I see it, I just say like before it even happens, like okay, let's see how many people show sure. their bicep today is yeah. tire flips. Like I don't know yeah. why they exist. Tire flips. Like, right. They're not like interesting, and everyone blows a bicep. Like. <laughs> Or was know. that um, competition where they were throwing the uh, kegs and they had two guys with all oh. actresses back there? Just yeah, that's the strongest man. That was the oh, greatest thing. Not was for the athlete, though. Talk about like, anything dangerous. Shit. Right. That was, uh, yes, you can. But yeah. throwing sandbags, we know full well that you can throw a sandbag and hit your judge in the face with it. I mean, we can make anything dangerous. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, how, wait, Jessica, how, how do you know that that could possibly I don't, I just, I just, I've just heard that happens. I've heard that people do it. Okay. <laughs> I have no personal experience with that. No happened. personal experience oh, with that. Sure. No, sure. no, don't ever become a strong man, Joe. No, I am <laughs> a I would never do such a thing like that. It's crazy. Yeah. That reminds me, I, uh, I interviewed Bobby Thompson uh, about a month ago, maybe. And he was talking about, I think it was like his first or second competition, something like that. And they were doing a keg over bar uh, backwards. 
And uh, I guess he said for some reason they had some kid back there spotting the kegs. And he said he he uh, just about decapitated the kid, uh, just yeah. about wiped him out. And he said, uh, oh, yeah. he said with his first keg, like just about knocked him out, I guess. And uh, second <laughs> keg turned around and checked, and he said there was no one anywhere near back there. <laughs> was like, He's throwing the kegs? He was yeah. throwing them? He was throwing them, yeah. And, and, and there was a kid spotting them? Cake throwing. Apparently, yeah. Why do we need spotters for throwing a bag? Well, it's like the Texas show. Maybe, I mean, because yeah, like, TVs <laughs> back there, so maybe they thought, like, you know, people were like, bouncing. Yeah. Getting, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't so. think that was very well thought through. But it was really a ton of views. So. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. Well, that was yeah, the funniest they, they thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Those kegs with, with the, yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. It was literally the funniest thing I've ever seen. So that was great. Yeah. 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 For anybody watching who hasn't seen it, it was uh, Trey Mitchell and Gabriel Pena came in second in that in Texas Strongest Man. So that's where the event happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of events though that I think could be really dangerous. That I like if you have ever done like power stairs. So if you're, oh, like, yeah. at power stairs to, like, have to climb back down them, like, yeah. I'm just waiting. There are people falling and all that, all that kind of stuff. Like, no, Oh, yeah, there. going the way yeah. down on the power stairs is yeah. so much scarier There's than the way up. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, like, yeah, that's – somebody's, somebody's going to die. Probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> somebody's going to die today. <laughs> yeah, <true>. I'm <laughs> anticipating death. <laughs> right. It's in the air. Have all three of you done power stairs? I don't see them that often. I have not. We didn't start, I have yeah. not. <clears throat> Yeah, they're they're a pain in the ass. I mean, they're actually way harder than they look. I mean, they might look hard. I don't know, but like we did them oh. for OSG, and we we bought a, a pair of them for our gym, and they're just. I mean, they take up a lot of room and stuff for people's gyms, but I mean, they're really really hard. <laughs> they're really they hard. Are. They're so going hard. back down. You have to either like turn around and go down front ways, or you have to like crab walk backwards down. The, like so, it just depends. And yeah, like at hard. OSG, I'm pretty sure like what three women finished out of like every single weight class. Like, yeah. they're, heavy. they're awful. So, but they're fun to watch. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah I love, I think they're a great spectator event because they're always head to head. Yeah. And, yeah. How high is the step, in the, uh, Jessica, in the one that you have? <laughs> oh, what's that, John? No, I was saying, Jessica, in the one that you have, how high is the step? How high is the step? Yeah. Well, well, they're at least 18 inches and there's four of them. So whatever that is, don't, I won't do yeah. math on the spot. No, no, I just, I met, I met one of them. But yeah. Whatever, actually. Okay. Yeah, 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 they're, usually, one they're inches. usually between like 16 and 18 inches and there's usually at least four of them. So we have them at our gym, but we, the last event that we did, we're assholes. So we did like a duck walk into a power stair. Oh. So yeah. Like, yeah, right. Duck walk's really hard too, actually. I, actually, I, actually, I, actually, I, actually, I hate walk. duck walk. People are so mad at us, and then we're like, "Why don't people sign up for our shows?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lauren, you're not the only one. I think I, I've heard duck walks like the most hated event. So I've heard of duck walk, and you never see it anymore because it sucks. The duck walk is I like it too, but it's hard. Yeah, my <laughs> nationals, Canadian nationals had a duck walk farmers medley. That was yes. fun for your hands. <laughs> yeah. So bad. And everything so else. We actually they did a duck walk in the 2017 Arnold Amateur as the mystery event that they didn't know they were going to do on the very last day. And so there's all these shots of them like literally they look ridiculous duck walking across like the main stage and like falling all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun event to throw in there when people aren't expecting it. So oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. Haley, I was wondering, uh, what part of Canada are you in? Are you like in the Ontario area, like JF and Maxime and Sam? Okay, cool. Yeah, I am in Ontario, but I'm about 16 hours away from Maxine and Sam. Ontario is really big, and they're like on the total opposite end, but yeah. Um, I'm in Ontario. I'm right on the Detroit border. I'm actually only like three or four hours away from Jessica. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Like when the borders open and we can meet in the middle of the train, it's like we've done it quite a few times. It's really, really easy. Yeah. Lots of good strongman gyms in in the middle. <laughs> and then I actually I own a gym and Derek and I we own a gym in Windsor and we'll often have people come over from Michigan and stuff when uh, the borders open. Oh, that's awesome. 
Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, Isaac, I'm talking a lot. Jump in. Yeah, Isaac. Right. <laughs> oh man, pressure. Uh, well, um, no, I was I was gonna say because it is funny you were talking about the the tire flips and everything and um, how they're just they're not a great exercise. And I just interviewed JF two days ago. Yeah, two days ago, um, and he loves tire flips. Like he goes. Does off. he? Oh, I should have listened to that one first. And I was like, yeah. So because like, I've. I've played with them a bit. I had like a 450 pound tire, something like that, that I got for free. And so I used to do them all the time. Um, and they're great for like cardio. If you're not going super heavy or anything, you can yeah. um, do that. That's what but I like, like them for. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, doing like some conditioning work, I just do it across. Oh, the yeah. Um, but yeah, doing like the, the 900 pound ones or whatever they have. And like, yeah. that's just, <laughs> I like to my be bike honest, like, like I don't think it's not that I think they're like specifically bad or anything. It's just I guess maybe it's because I've seen them mainly in amateur shows and like anyone who doesn't who doesn't have someone explain it to them in depth first, their first instinct is always to try to curl it up, right? Yeah. And it's more just like a lack of experience. But it only takes one time. Like if the tire's heavy enough and yeah. you try to bicep curl it up, like you're gone. Like yeah. <laughs> I know it's yeah and that's and that's one of the things i know i think it was brian shaw had a video about a little bit ago where he was glad that they didn't have tire flips and world strongest man anymore because of everybody tearing biceps with it um but i mean they just gotta get stronger biceps i guess that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be the biceps anyway last year. My next show is gonna be all tire flips. It's gonna be tire <laughs> everything. It's just <laughs> but you need five different variations of the tire <laughs> flip. Yeah. <laughs> right. like a show, like just like my fun. grip only show that Jessica's so excited for. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ten so. different ways to grip. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> Interesting show. <laughs> yeah, yeah I is stupid. So I just I just put that out there. It's stupid. And if you have grip in your show, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. PSA. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. The only grip event that I'm any good at is Hercules Hold, which I don't know how that's possible, but I'm pretty good at that one. Yeah, but the rest of that. That. how is it? Well, you know, it's know. different. It's you different. Know. Hercules Hold is so mental. And yeah. you know, your whole body is like exposed, right? So you're just like hanging on like this. Yeah. <laughs> you're very it's vulnerable. Really cool. I'm very vulnerable. <laughs> really Be gentle back. with my midsection. <laughs> it's also a great time to just tell the crowd everything that you're feeling. Right. I mean, like, I, like, I, like, I, like, I use this as an opportunity for a speech. <laughs> now that I have your attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that. Didn't uh, Phil Fister do that? Like, basically, yeah. he was doing Hercules Hold. He knew he wasn't going to win, and he's telling the crowd, like, I'll be back. I'm going to win another year. Like, he's telling the whole thing. I never know anyone actually Aww. did it. Really, write that down. That's, That's our so awesome. Write that down. Bring the car walk. We'll be like, I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> 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 sympathy card. It'll be amazing. Yeah. So, Jessica, next time you have a Hercules Hold, I expect yes. a minute speech. Just yes. <laughs> record the whole it. Thing. The whole thing. I'm going to be thanking yeah. the fans, the family. Like, we don't know who you are. Yeah. Like, just go keep sit down. All right, great. Exactly. I want to get a Rocky Balboa moment, though, you know, yes. where you're like, wow, <laughs> I'm going to beat the world now. <laughs> People are going to be like looking away. Yeah, so you like, kind of like tease the crowd, like, oh, I'm a best like, go. Oh, no, no, still nope. moving around. <laughs> <Nope. laughs> Do that, like kicks with my feet stuff. It'll be great. Can't right. wait. <laughs> uh, Travis Ortmeyer posted a video from when he did the uh, Serbian Power, whatever it was, just a little bit ago. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. The heights off, I think it was. And so as the as the Hercules hold started going, it was pulling him off kilter. So he, no. ended, up, wow. he ended up on one leg, and so like one oh. side was higher than the other. And yeah, and I was like, wow, that dude, doesn't sound like, fun. Nothing got hurt. Uh, <laughs> we got to use the Hercules hold in Norway in like 20, must have been 17. 
um, or 18. For, they did Strongest Woman in the World in Norway at C4 Power, the, where they do all the natural stone stuff out there. So we got to use the really cool Hercules hold that all of the giants of the world have used. Um, that equipment out there was really cool. So I've got some shots of me actually succeeding in a group of eight four years ago, and that's the only one. That's the only time that's happened. So I hold on to that event very, very deeply. <laughs> very deep. Yeah, I've never done one in a competition, but we actually had one like specially made for our gym. We have a friend who's a welder, so like we make him make us many things. <laughs> we do the <laughs> but same it's actually thing. Really cool. Like it turned out really well. He did such a good job. Oh, cool. I keep telling him he should get into like custom equipment design. Yeah. You know, such a non-niche market, right? Like <laughs> right. houses, <laughs> clients. <laughs> Especially right now, <laughs> building gym equipment, uh, you could make a lot. <laughs> yeah, he'd have to make stuff that was a little more like people would know what it was. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Jessica, didn't you try uh, the Denny Stones a little while back? Or not the we we have them in a competition. That's probably what you're thinking of. Um, oh, my dude. team is throwing a competition where we actually have them. So we've been training with like the replica rings. We bought the ones that they sell actually from Movers and Beats, which are really cool. They're a lot like Rogue sells a pair too. Um, if people want to practice with like the Denny Stone stuff, but holy shit, those hurt, man! Have you ever used those rings? We That's have like those rings at Atlas, and they're literally oh like God. the worst. Yeah, yeah. I've this never tried them, but. Those things, things are pretty narrow, narrow so they yeah. dig into your Yeah, head. that's what I was thinking. Those They're narrow, narrow things. And like it really doesn't take much weight at all until you're like, wow. Like these are like <laughs> it. I mean, and I'm a big baby anyways, and a terrible grip, so it's just like I don't know. I don't know how to make this. So. <laughs> ridiculous. But now we've been practicing with them, and that's one of those skills that like um, we're throwing this like super old school show that's got um, like Denny Stones in it. We're doing like a tug of war event um, and stuff like that. We've got natural stones. Yeah. So we're having this like really super weird event type of show. Um, and the Denny Stones are one of them. So we've been practicing with them. And I don't know why. That, you're never, never done that. You're screaming that? The strongman sumo? Um, it's Facebook Live. So it's on our page for Unbreakable Athletic uh, Athletics Academy is usually what we do. Um, and we usually at least Facebook live it for people that want to actually watch. But um, Denny Stones are like, it's one of those strongman events, though, that like, it's not, it's not super exciting to watch. Like, yeah. bear with me. Okay. Like, it's like, they get, they get credit. It's like a novelty. Mm. It is. So, you know, besides grit being stupid, it's also not very fun to watch. So just write that down. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Here are all the reasons that we should not be doing these events. But we're going to yeah. do them anyway. <laughs> I know. You haven't convinced me. I still want to watch. I know. Exactly. See, I wrote it. I know. <laughs> No, it's 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 fun for them to train this weird stuff, but um, that's definitely one of those events I've never you don't see often, um, almost anywhere. But they're fun to watch. I've been asking forever for tug of war to come back. I want to see. Yeah, cool. that, that, that would awesome. be so much fun. <laughs> We've been practicing I want on that so bad. <laughs> tug of war is like surprisingly technical, which is really funny. We actually like Google like tug of war stance and. <laughs> it will not surprise you to know there are actual like tug of war like teams and like semi pro teams, which is kind of wow. Um, but yeah, so tug of war is surprisingly a lot harder. Of course, I've been um, up against all of our guys at our gym, and most of them are like super heavyweights. Yeah. <laughs> you know, me, even, even the size that I am, they're getting the rope and they're just like boop, <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been good for them to at least practice the technical of it, but I'm like, you're not going to go really hard, okay? <laughs> So it's been a, it's been a fun thing to kind of learn. Are you, you guys are just doing it one versus one for the tug of war? Then? No, it's one versus one, but it basically works like a bracket system. So basically mm. it's, it's random who else goes against you. And then you have to keep going basically. So the event is going to be, and that people will have at least met like three times or something like that. Um, okay. So you get, points, you get points for winning twice out of three or one out of three or that, that kind of thing. So okay. Yeah. Um, it's just different. So we do one show a year where we just do these weird off events and not surprisingly, we have um, less participation, but um, we do another event in a couple of months. That'll be really super standard strongman stuff for people that want to qualify for the nationals. Like that. But 
this is our one that we do all this weird shit just for people that like it. So. Yeah, that sounds it's so gonna be uh, indoors or like out in sand or something. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna do most of them indoors. The natural stones that we have, we have a set of stones here that we call the Hoosier stones that all have different names for them. They're anywhere from 240 to 400 pounds. Um, and they're these natural stones and there's a set of four of them. So we like to use those in our shows like once a year. And so those are outside actually, we have like a mulch pit for them. So they get points um, a lot like the Arnold did two years ago with the natural stone that Mateus threw. Mateus was the only one that like shouldered that natural stone like three times in a row when no one else was getting it. Um, they basically we have, we do the same point system for them that, that they did there where you get points for lapping it, you get points for moving it to your chest, you get points for it being on your shoulder, et cetera, et cetera. So, we have this really cool mulch pit um, where they get to they get to lift all these natural stones and it looks really cool. I mean, it's very, very strong, man. Like Lauren was saying earlier about stones um, being able, that type of stuff is just very crowd pleasing. It's very obvious that that's difficult to do. It's very obvious that that's a hard thing to be doing um, compared to some of the stuff we do that doesn't really have any any way for you know the audience to know that that's heavy. Um, these very clearly look heavy. So they've been a lot of fun. People come in from all around the state to come and try to lift the Hoosier stones here. Um, so it's just pretty cool. Yeah. I see posts at least once a week uh, about the Hoosier yeah. stones. So it's really cool. Yeah. yeah and uh, also, so Jessica, you were talking about strongest woman in the world before. Uh, talk about the unique, I think you told me in the past, your favorite event that you've done there that maybe you'll <laughs> never encounter anywhere else. Yeah. The, we, <laughs> the event that people most likely associate me with just because it's been out there for so long, we did a salmon toss at uh, strongest one in the world, Alaska. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. It was in Alaska. Yeah, I didn't forget about that one. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we did. Alaska was like this um, strongest woman in the world, and was really cool. They did it with all of this equipment that was specific for Alaska. Which to me, when you go around the world and you compete, you know, in all these different places, having events that are actually specific to the area that you're competing in is so you know almost vintage strongman now at this point where people don't do that type of stuff. We're starting to see, you know, equipment and stuff that's not really um, in tune with, you know, the area that you're in. So when we went to Alaska, they had all these events. Um, they had us um, pushing a dog sled. They had lots of kegs. And then they had this 55-pound um, pound rubber salmon that suppo supposedly was a replica of, like, the biggest salmon that's ever been caught, like, out of Alaska. That's what they told us. That wow. could have been full. We don't know. We don't know. But it, it was 55 pounds. And you had to throw it like for distance. So it's this floppy rubber salmon that's got like a face. It had like a personality and it had like a big face. Okay. Yeah. It has these eyes that go like that, you know, and they're like, oh, it's like a perpetual. <laughs> like I can't throw salmon. you, you're too distracting. Look away. Yeah. So you had to throw it like a shot put. So you couldn't like wind it, like hold it by the tail and throw it like a hammer. You know, you can't, which is what we wanted to do, but that we were um, really close. Um, we were competing at the state fair and we had people, the audience was really close and they were terrified that we were going to let go of it and, you know, hit some kid in the face with like a 55 pound salmon. That would be terrible. Awesome, but also terrible at the same time. <laughs> right? Imagine <laughs> towards your face, you know, like, you know, and like out of the air. So we had this two handed shot put it. Um, and it was just so fun because it was just so total strong, man. It's a weird implement. <laughs> no one had touched it before. Really hard to train for and that sort of thing. So we just went out and gave it the old shove and the crowd loved it. It flops all over the ground and that kind of thing. So I thought we'd start seeing more odd object throwing events. But as far as I know, I haven't seen any that were quite as ridiculous as that one. <laughs> they didn't have like a uh, like a grizzly bear wrestle or anything like right. that. It was exactly. Super, it was like a those box people, I know. So <laughs> <laughs> honestly, yeah. But when you walk, if you've ever been to Alaska, if you like go to like their trails and stuff, there's like eight signs like everywhere that's like you could die from a bear. Like every fucking like three feet, you're like, there's a bear. What are you gonna do if there's a bear? This is what you do if you got a bear. And I was terrified. It was like July, and I was terrified of Alaska. They scared the shit out of me. So that was my Alaska. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Yeah, my, uh, it's a great story. I can't hear it too many times. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's never a bad time to bring up the salmon toss. Like. Never. <laughs> right. That's very iconic. That's pretty good. Well, yeah. the funny thing was, dude, like they kind of made fun of us for it too. When it very first came out, it just said salmon toss, and we're like, what? The fuck? So it was kind of we're like, we need to study those guys out in Seattle that like do the fish throwing. And I'm like, it's not. There's not going to be actual guts. Like this isn't real. 
PETA's not oh, calling wow. us. We had people when Strongman Core actually posted that. Um, they were like, that's really inhumane. And we're like, you think that's a real fish? Do you think that really? <laughs> we wow. had this comment, right? yeah, this Do you think the fish are able to make this facial expression? I mean, honestly. <laughs> so people actually thought that we used the same fish, you know, 32 times. I was like, you know what? That <laughs> Man, that's a sturdy <laughs> ass fish. Jesus. The internet will never, ever fail you. Never fail you, ever. It just no, every matter. time. Does yeah. not matter. You can't You can't possibly think that. It's like, yeah, they do. But, but they can't. Apparently. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Great story. So real quick, <laughs> uh, anybody watching, subscribe, like this stream. I got to take, I mean, we're having such a good time. I got to tell you real quick and, <laughs> and take a break. So. Uh, my block strongest man subscribe if you like what you're watching how can you not like what you're watching when we're all done here go over to hunger smash fitness subscribe to isaac as well subscribe to all of our uh guests follow them all on instagram chonky and strong filthy underscore fithin Haley randall lifts which randall has two l's so it ends up with three l's together Haley randall lifts <laughs> All, all right, and so my next question, Lauren, is for you. I saw you doing some moss wrestling in one of your posts. Talk about that a little bit. That looks cool. That was really fun. Um, that's something that um, I, I've, I've just started seeing within the last year, and we have this um, friend that swung by the gym a couple of times, and he's um, an instructor. Uh, his name's Chip, and he offered to do, like, um, a seminar one morning and he walked us through warming up. He walked us through the different moves and it's just, it's um, the most fun I've ever had fighting over a stick. <laughs> like for real, like, I mean, that's all you're doing is you're fighting over a stick, but like, it's so fun. Um, and like he went, I probably outweigh him by 50, 60 pounds and I can, I could have out muscle him but he is so fast going back and forth and twisting and turning and it's just it's insane it was fun that's one i would love 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 to try that one i have not yeah. tried that one it's it uh it's oh fun. sick oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's cameron <laughs> <laughs> yep that's the fun part oh my god yeah, but it's cool. That's freaking um, awesome. I want to try yeah. that so bad. <laughs> but I uh, love any event where you're like actually going head to head with someone. Like those yeah. are my favorite. Me like, too. Yeah. Like when, yeah, when we they started... like, line us up in uh, lanes and you get to race next yeah. to somebody. Yeah, it's so much more exciting. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We started doing that at our contest and trying to make more events where you're actually going head to head with someone else. It's much more entertaining. Um, and yeah. we also start, especially at the amateur level of encouraging like promoters to start doing more events, um, more than just one at a time of actually starting to do a, for amateur shows to cut down one of the common complaints that we get um, for the, one of the reasons that Strongman is not quite as popular as it might be is because when you go and watch it, you're committing 10 hours of your day, right? It's a <laughs> yeah. long time at an amateur contest. So, Along with, you know, encouraging head-to-head um, -head battles and that sort of a thing, encouraging promoters to start doing more than one event at the same time at an amateur contest um, can really cut down on some of the time and make the crowd more involved um, and more likely to be cheering people on. So, um, yeah, that, I thought that was good. such a good idea when you guys did that one show where you had almost, like, stations for every yeah. single yeah. event. Like, yeah, it's that's a great way such to a good idea. Time. Right, it's a great – we can get through 100 people in, like, four hours. Like, it's just literally yeah. just – so that type of thing where people don't have to commit like their entire day to it um, on the amateur level is really um, is really kind of a thing that we wish more promoters would kind of get into doing. Once they see it happening successfully um, at some of these shows, they'll they'll probably switch to that. But, you know, change yeah. takes a little bit for some of these. Things. Yeah, because say you're not like there to see one specific person. You could just right. come for like an hour and walk through and watch every station and see what's going on. And then, you right. know. No. If you're not super invested in who wins what, it's still cool to yeah. walk around and see people doing stuff. Yeah, yeah making some of these shows um, take less time is going to be a big thing for promoting it overall, I think, to me at least. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the number one complaint. Anytime you bring someone to a strongman show or anything, they'll right. always say, like, yeah. oh, yeah, I had fun. It was cool. But, like, yeah, I, I didn't sit there yeah. for 12 hours. Right. Like, right. Mm -hmm. It's like, I yeah. warned you. I wanted right. to be, we'd be here all day. <laughs> you thought I was lying. <laughs>
<laughs> Even my dad at the Arnold, he made it through all my stuff, one thing. <laughs> but then <laughs> he was like, I was like, okay, how long till he's across the street having a beer? I think he made it through yeah. like one of the men's events. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He's like, okay, cool, bye. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah, much. Mammoth was like that, Jessica, right? It was like nine hours or something like that. Do you what? I'm sorry. I said Mammoth was like that. It was like nine hours or something. It's, yes, it's two they hours. Yeah, it's just one of those things where we're, we're, the gym that I'm at, the promoter, when I actually very first got there, he was the first one that I ever saw run all five events actually at the same time. There's a couple of ways to do it, but he actually had enough equipment and, and uh, you have to have enough volunteers and that sort of thing to do that. But he literally runs all five events at the same time, kind of like Mammoth, um, sort of in that in that same in that same kind of sphere. Even if you did five events, and you ran two, and then you had everyone flip, and you did the other two, and then the last one they did basically all together, so everyone can watch basically all together. Um, that makes the time go a lot, a lot smoother. Uh, Mammoth may had just a lot going on. The recent one they did, they were doing you know the pro contest, and they were doing record breakers, and then they were doing a regular contest, and then they were doing masters nationals. That's just a lot <laughs> going on, you know, kind of like all at the same time. So that is bound to be kind of not a super great example of this on a much smaller scale. Um, just because they had like four different competitions. Oh, and they had Highland Games there too. So it was a lot. It was just a lot happening in that arena. But um, it's just one of the ways that you can shorten some of this down, I think, and that helps everyone. Yeah, I remember I was watching the live stream. Isaac was on there too. And there was one of the Highland events was the sheath toss. Yeah. And the, uh, the commentator was like, a sheep toss? Why are they tossing a sheep? They're tossing oh sheep. God. <laughs> really? <laughs> Here comes PETA again. Right. Oh, no. yeah. Here we go again. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know if this is controversial or not, but, you know, like, my thing is I feel like strong women deserve as much attention as the guys do. And so I want to give you a platform. Uh, if you want to talk about any of those topics, like equal pay, things like that, you want to, like, you can use this time for that. And we're uh, very supportive of that. So feel free. That is that is loaded. Don't do it, either one of you. I was gonna say, I'm like, I'm sure we can make anything you that add. That is loaded. Really try, right. but... <laughs> even more than no, even no one would imagine could be controversial. Yeah. <laughs> if you if, if you want to if you want to skip it, we can. I just figured I'd give you the opportunity. Oh, it's good. As we're moving on, I think into you know kind of the next phase of strongman. Strong woman is the fastest growing um, you know facet of the sport right now. So I think we've proven um, at this point that people want to see. Uh, women compete in this sport. We're not asking, you know, even right, right now, we're not asking to be treated like Thor or to have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for people that win. What we're asking for is um, basically the same recognition um, for the pro class that we're, we're giving to the men. So I think earlier we were talking about how the Arnold um, has not been rescheduled yet for 2021. Um, and that the scuttlebutt is that basically they're talking about only um, scheduling the men's pro at this time instead of the women's pro for the Arnold. Um, and it's just that kind of stuff to where sometimes the women's pro class and, and just the women's amateur also kind of feels like it's sort of been left in the wayside and that it's sort of an afterthought and that kind of thing. So um, the pro class is here to stay. The women's classes are here to stay. So what we're going to do now is basically figure out how we can promote everyone, which is good for everyone in the entire sport from someone who just began, you know, just someone who's been doing this for 20 years. So if you talk to any of these, these women who've been around for a long time, Kristen Rhodes, those type of people were competing when there weren't even women's classes. She had to compete in the men's classes to even be allowed to compete. She had to sign up in men's classes because there weren't any. So we've come a long way from there. We just have a long way to go. Um, and I think that's all of our goal right now is in 10 years, where's the sport going to be for us now compared to where Kristen found it 10 years you know, ago. So that's kind of where our focus is. Yeah. Yeah. I think like something that would go a long way, um, which I'm sure this, I'm sure there's 20 reasons why this is a bad idea. So it will end up being controversial, but like, I guess just letting like something as simple as letting the pro women do the same events, competitions, et cetera, as the men. Like, I don't understand the reasoning why the pro women at the Arnold can't do the exact same events that the pro men at the Arnold do. Like, right. just you see the men doing this awesome, like, wheel of death, and then, like, yeah. the women could all push it, so, you right. know what I mean? <clears throat> what is the reason? Like, you know? Right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's as controversial as I'm going to get on this podcast. No, 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 it's all good. Like I said, I mean, 
Um, I, I, I told Jessica this story. Like, I have a four-year-old daughter, and I need her to know that things are possible, you know? So I, I kind of have made it my mission to uh, help bring as much attention to the women as the guys get, and uh, simple as that. Well, uh, Like, you're all amazing. Like, what you're doing is, is astounding, right? So, uh, yeah, the women's deadlift record isn't what the men's is, but it's still, like, way more than me and anybody I know except Isaac can do. Like, it's it's... When I saw Haley doing a deadlift at like you were close to 600 pounds, I think I'm like, wait, that's possible. It's 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 astounding. Like women or not, it's astounding, and and that's that's just that. Yeah, yeah. They used to say that people didn't want to watch the women, and I think we've really proven that that's just not true. I mean, if you go and you look at any of the live streams for any of the rogue videos and that sort of thing, you can actually go and look and see how many people actually do view them. Um, last year, for reasons that we won't mention on here, it was a lot different. But the year before that. Um, at the Arnold, when we were up on stage doing um, doing uh, stone to shoulder up on the stage at the Arnold where they, they had it with the expo. I mean, at any given time, we've got 3,000 people standing there watching us. It isn't that people don't want to watch then. It's that we basically have stuck to this narrative that people don't want to watch us because then you don't have to do anything about it. And I think slowly but surely, we're proving that is literally not the case and that the women's record breakers and the women's pro, especially at the Arnold, are big things that people actually go to watch. And, you know, if you don't promote people, how will anyone ever know anything is happening here? So right. we're, we're growing it in spite of lack of promotion. We're growing it in spite of all of these opportunities. We're growing it in spite of not having any major supporters. So when you think about the fact that we're growing without all of that, well, how would we be growing if we actually had all of that? Nobody knows right. because they won't know. We appreciate this type of exposure on here, or at least talking about the fact that these things just what we've assumed that people don't want to watch women's sports. It's just not true. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I hope you know you're welcome anytime. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. I, that actually reminds me about like my day job where, you know, we, I have a group that I manage and the project managers always come to me and say like, well, we have this type of work. Give me somebody who's done it 50 times. And it's like, but then you're never going to grow the team forward so that everybody right. can do it. Right. You know, it's, it's a similar yeah. situation. Right. Just giving us a, the, the, the same chance to play. You know, and, and it's not hard promoting the females just like you do the males. I mean, no, hon not. honestly, tell me why it's hard. Like, it, there's no difference. They're just the two people playing a thing. Um, yeah. But it's just like we keep getting seen as an afterthought. And, I mean, I'm sorry. I think it's way more impressive when I see a woman deadlift 600 pounds than see Thor pick up another nine. I'm sorry. I think it's way more impressive that women are out here, you know, working against the, you know, social stigmas and, you know, the, the uh, sexist stigmas and still coming out on top, you know, that's impressive to me. I, uh, so, I didn't, I'm glad you said it. I didn't want to say it. And if, if Thor ever comes on here, uh, sorry, buddy, but yes, I was more impressed with Haley 600 than you beating I'm, it by one kilo. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, just, it's, it's way more impressive to me. I love the guys. I really do. But I mean, I really think it's time for the women to shine. We just need to be given a platform to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's not like we're not willing to, you know, put in the, Put in the legwork because like one big thing about really strength sports in general but strongman especially is like you do have to like give the audience something interesting you have to give them a personality you got to give them a storyline like you gotta if you really want like a name for yourself you have to kind of build your it's social media and be good at that stuff but yeah there's tons of us who are like beyond <laughs> willing to Make a spectacle out of ourselves. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, look at Jessica. <laughs> we will throw this in. We do not care. Right. What I will do for $10 will blow your mind. Yeah. Come on. Let me get my Freeze. wallet. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Jessica, Jessica's all talk. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not what no, I, but I mean. Ta talking about personalities, like, here, let's. Let's go look at Lauren's Instagram for a second. Right. A lot of tongue on her Instagram. Lots of tongue. Lots of it. Lots of it. I'm, I'm good with it. Look at that. <laughs> See? First one. Tongue. Look at that. Yeah. I'm sorry. It just falls Titty, out. I knew that. It just falls out of my face. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. There aren't a lot of guys with this much charisma. Aaron Stoney's the same way, by the way, with the tongue. Yeah. No, but <laughs> like, it, it's... I've noticed that, like, that's why I like to dress up and wear mustaches and wigs and all kinds yeah. of shit on my face. 
It's yeah. because like I, I like engaging with the crowd and when you get them going, it gets everybody else yeah. going. And it just it helps build up that that environment and that atmosphere. So I think it adds to the experience. Oh, me too. I, I love all that stuff. I love playing off the crowd. I love like getting them going and that's that's half of like the part that makes competing versus training like so so special to me I, and you see a lot of it and yeah I mean people like watching you know, that stuff like did you know that Haley bought she bought a life-size swan costume to wear to Daytona Beach this year it's like eight feet tall it's fucking amazing. spoiler alert <laughs> <Seriously>? wow <laughs> Yeah, and then but weirdly enough, like the whole like top section from like her like it's just gone. It's missing. I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> so I just I just be prepared. If we need like a five second delay or something like yeah. that, you know. Yeah, yeah, if you need a distraction, if anyone wants to hire me on the side yeah. to like yes. run past while their just, competitors are going, it like be I'm getting <laughs> down. Order of malfunctions in Florida that we right. have never seen before. Just <laughs> epic proportions. And just let Lynn know about it. Swan. <laughs> we got that idea from the one description, right, Jessica, that said uh, lifting costumes instead of, it's like, costumes. lifting outfit. Like, oh, yeah, in powerlifting, <laughs> apparently they call it a singlet. They call it a costume. In a like, costume, yeah. <laughs> so we're like, oh. we need costumes, obviously. Yeah, yeah, right. they have costumes, and we don't even have costumes. That's not fair. <laughs> I know. It's not fair. Yeah, Lauren's we're, we're already right. designing the strongman I've, costume. I've in her got. Head. I can see it. Uh, I'll be back, guys. I'll be back. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my sewing machine. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a, a great idea for your uh, competition later in the year. Just say that like costumes are mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. Green. You know. <laughs> like, uh, see what people show up in. Yeah, yeah don't even elaborate. Right. Just say, like, you must right. wear a lifting costume. Just a costume. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's actually in the rule books, though. I was like, you know, what's the problem with strongman? We don't have costumes. So, hey, yeah, let's that's that's that. Yeah. It's going to be great. Well, I mean, strongman's origins, like, most of it does, most of it can be looked back at, like, circus and bar rooms, basically. Yeah. People yeah. putting on a show. I mean, that's where yeah. strongman yeah. started. And that's why, yeah. I mean, that's why, like, you know, like Robert Oberst does so well is because he's got this wacky he's person. Memorable. Right. Um, people are yeah. like, and that's never actually a really good point. Like at this level, people are always like, I mean, even at this level, like with the pro, it's like people remember like who they remember. And it's kind of like, that's just, I'm sorry, that's how it is. But in the age of Yeah, society, exactly. Yeah. You yeah. have to be just strong to get noticed. You just do like, like people like a sponsor, whoever might notice you for other reasons. But I mean, if you want to be in a household name, it's not going to be doing this. It has to be something else. And Oberst is a really great example of that. He may not be the strongest, but he's more memorable to the average person because he's done that. So, I mean, that's just kind of how it works at this point. Yeah. 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 Haley, he might need some deadlift tips. I think I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Robert Overs. Yeah, I hear. <laughs> I mean, if the tip is just literally going to be to not deadlift, then right. <laughs> <laughs> to no on that tip, <laughs> just going to keep deadlifting. <laughs> no, that was like the funniest quote of that just got totally like taken out of yeah the context. Just yeah. taken out of context, out of proportion, and ran away. Oh my God. <laughs> Wasn't it? I mean, he was like on Joe. And again, he made a shirt out of it, which shows exactly how good yeah. he is for that stuff. Well, that, and that's why, you know, there's like 2 million people watching Joe Rogan's podcast right. and he makes that yeah. one statement, and then it just yeah. gets like Blows up. skyrocketed. <laughs> Man. Wow. It's yeah. good. So what about uh, any good, uh, if anyone's starting strong man or strong woman, um, what are your tips for them? Don't. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I mean, other than being eccentric and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. your, your tip is do Zumba first, right? Right. Honestly, right. my tip, my tip, my actual tip for people, which is the same tip that I give new people whenever they want to start strongman at the gym, is that um, to find a competition and to do it. So now with the thing that will not be mentioned kind of coming to an end-ish, 
Um, there are more amateur competitions out there. And so for me, we always have like new people come to the gym and there's just so much that you can do. Right. And so we always have these people that are like, well, I don't want to do a strongman competition until I can deadlift this amount or squat that amount. And none of that shit is relevant. None of that shit's relevant, but they think of it more like powerlifting. So I always tell people to pick a competition. A novice class is a great place to start. There's nothing wrong with doing novice. That's why it's there. So, and to pick a competition that actually has events to train for, because otherwise there's, you know, unlimited amount of strongman events. We just make them up half the time, no, no, no. you know? So I um, find a competition to actually train those events rather than just going to the gym and kind of randomly messing around with stuff. It's my own. No, no, no. It's good to have a direction to go in. Yeah. And, and yeah. you make a good point. It's really frustrating to hear people say, I don't want to do this competition until I'm this certain level of strong. Okay. Well, right. like what happens when you reach that level of strong? And then you look at Joe Schmo over there and he's beating your numbers left and right. Like, when, are, when is the right time? Like, right. just jump in and get your feet wet. They're fun. Do it. And you're going to have fun regardless, whether yeah. or not you zero every event. I've seen people yeah. zero every event and somehow saying, that was that was great because yeah. they're fun. It's meant to be fun, and it's meant to be challenging. And if you don't challenge yourself and throw yourself into larger tanks with bigger fish, you're not going to get any better. I'm just going to join a contest that Joe Schmo's not in. That's exactly right. Well, well <laughs> You know, some of us I mean, do zero stuff no matter what, what competition they're doing, basically. So you might zero things for the rest of your life, is what I'm trying to say. Don't let that stop. <laughs> yeah. You may no, never stop. Some of us still zero stuff. I don't know. Yeah, my first year doing OSG, I zeroed the pressing event and I zeroed the stones because I yeah. like literally yeah. never done a stone before in my life. Like oh, well. I didn't have them to train with, and they were on the third day, and I didn't think that I was going to make the third day. So I was just like, these aren't our priority, <laughs> basically. Right. And uh, I still had a blast and I still came an eight, like with zeroing to events. So right. yeah, yeah, just yeah. get in there, get in there, the do people it. People <laughs> usually do better than they think they're going to do. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. It's so cool. it's worth trying. they come in last, then, then, you know. Well, then <laughs> we just won't talk about that person. <laughs> <laughs> but I even think like just the experience of like even if you're a complete beginner the experience of like choosing a competition doing a little you know following a little program or doing a little like training the events and everything getting ready for it prepping like the night before like all that experience is yeah. invaluable just in terms of like picking a contest and learning what you need to do to get ready for it and then going and doing it. Like, and that's why we whether say that, that means like you have a coach or you use like some template that you find online or your friend does it for you or whatever, like just seeing something through to the end, like is just a yeah. useful experience in itself. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we tell people that like picking, having competition experience, it's one thing to be able to do those lifts like in your gym, but it's another thing to drive for four hours and be there at nine 30 and listen to a rules meeting and feel sick yeah. and have all the and, and listen to someone yelling at you and being here. So like all of that stuff, because I had never actually been like a competitive athlete before in my entire life. So especially if you're someone that doesn't have a lot of experience actually doing that, you have to actually go and do that and learn how to compete because you end up making all kinds of silly mistakes that like you just weren't thinking. You just have to get used to doing that. So <laughs> people always feeling like they need to be a certain strength before they do something um, when you don't have any experience already. It's just the wrong thought process for that part of actually actually getting stronger and, and, and doing that is going and failing at stuff is going and literally just doing some of these comps. So new people, I always tell them to sign up, sign up for something and commit to it um, and actually go and do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. One thing I was always wondering, kind of getting the inside scoop. So Jessica, you mentioned uh, sponsors before kind of quickly, how does one go about getting sponsors or did they all come to the three of you? I mean, there's a couple of different ways to do it. There's a couple of big um, um, companies that sponsor a lot of athletes, um, SPD, Cerberus, a lot of these other great companies that sponsor a lot of athletes. There's certainly nothing wrong with calling someone up and asking them and being like, hi, I'm Sue. Have you met me before? Here's what I do. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. A lot of times some of these people that have... Um, you know, that are already in the community kind of watch and they kind of know and that sort of a thing. But there's also nothing wrong with putting yourself out there. You have to ask yourself what you can actually do for that company, not what the company is mm -hmm. going to do for you. What can you bring them? Why are you sure. different? Why are you special? Why Why does it matter? Why, why are should you they sponsor you? 
Yeah. So if you take your thinking for some of that stuff and you flip it and you don't say, how do I get people to sponsor me? If you flip that and you say, what will I bring to a sponsor? And then you find someone either, you know, locally, there's a lot of companies, meal prep companies, supplement companies that like to be involved and would like their name out there. So think about kind of what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially for local sponsors. I think, yeah, there's a, there's a big difference between getting like a sponsor that's already involved in the sport, like SPD or whatever, and, and getting a sponsor that's, you know, your local chiropractor or something like, sure. mm-hmm. for them. Yeah. You're going to be doing a lot of like one-on-one reaching out and having a conversation. And in those instances, yeah, you better have just like selling anything. Like you better have a good pitch where you tell them what the value is uh, for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And If you can articulate that in a way that makes sense to them, then it'll probably end up working out for you. Whereas, yeah, I think, Lauren, what do you think? SBD is already um, Also, a couple of things that I wish I had done before I started even considering like sponsorships and stuff like that is, you know, find a product that you actually like um, because it's a lot easier to sell something if you like it and you believe in it. Um, And then another thing is, you know, companies want people that are marketable they want people who have personalities and who kind of fit their uh persona and can actually communicate and reach people and customers um so like you gotta find a way to make yourself stand out and you gotta find a way to to reach people and interact with people if you can't do that then uh, companies aren't going to want to invest time and money and products in you so you've got to do some legwork. It's not just, hey, you want to throw me some free shit and I'll post pictures. There's a right. little bit of legwork to keep those relationships going. Yeah, it, it, that's a good way of putting it. It's a, it's a relationship, right, between you and the sponsor and you and all their potential audience, right? So they want someone who's going to maintain, like, good relationships with their audience, not, like, say, you know, say something every other day that isolates or hurts the feelings of 90% of the people that they're trying to sell things to. <laughs> so that's something else. I guess. Dude, why do people do that? That's so strange. I just don't care. I've so never odd. heard of that. Weird. Me neither. Awesome. Nothing pops Weird. to mind. Weird. Not a single individual. <laughs> Anywho. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I didn't Anywho, say anything. Speaking of... Uh, Speaking of promoting things that you like, if there's uh, anybody out there watching who's looking for a good pre-workout, go hard labs. <laughs> At checkout, MBSM10, use my code for 10% off. Thanks for the segue, ladies. <laughs> that was a <laughs> seamless transition. That was that, that was, was nice. that that was smooth. Disappointed you're smooth. not like I thought that was coming and I'm very disappointed in that. So maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> Same. Wait, I what's that? What, how, did I, how did I disappoint you? What did I miss? What? What did I miss? I, I said I thought you were gonna put, promote Haley actually on that last one. But. Oh I'm gonna let off no. if you promote anything you want at the end. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I do enough of that on my own. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, every, everybody Thanks. helps. We're just saying you need to be somebody and you need to act cool and because that's yeah, more that's interesting. True. That's about it, right? That's Sorry, all right. I'm not willing to share all my street uh, street cred on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just some of that. Cool. Actually, that's Derek did tell me to shamelessly self-promote our new ebook that we're coming out with. Though. Do it. Promote. Let's go. It's what? basically like going to be like strongman programming for dummies, but obviously we're not going to use that title. Because yeah. even though I'm a lawyer, I don't have the copyright skills to get us out of that one. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be like kind of like an in-depth, like teaching you how to program yourself, basically, instead of just like giving you a random program to follow. And we've been putting a lot of work into it. So I think it's going to be really cool. It's almost done. So be on the sure. look. <laughs> we have another book out. Yeah, let yeah. me know for sure. I'll, I'll promote wow. it for you. Uh, de- I'll definitely promote it for you. Let me know. Do you have you a know. deadlifting ebook out, too? Oh, yes, I do also have my deadlifting ebook. Uh, it's available on Starting Strongman, or you can DM me on Instagram if you want to buy it. Like, 
directly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shoot me over the links. We'll shoot me over the links. We'll put it in the description for you for sure. Oh, okay, perfect. I will do that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think I've probably proven I have a big mouth. So even when you're done with the second one, I'll uh, I'll reach out to people. <laughs> perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Cool. Whenever I want anyone contacted or anything, I just ask John, and he's the one who. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not, not not to brag or anything, but uh, I interviewed Jay at first. I I softened him up for Isaac. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Somebody actually messaged me and asked me if like you were legit because they didn't know who you were, and I'm not going to tell you who it was because that's how I am as a person. So, but somebody did message me, and they were like. Is this, is this like a legit show? Should I go on it? And I don't remember what I told him, but he eventually, like, he came on the show. So apparently it was good. Whatever oh, good. It was. Thank you. <laughs> he must have said something. You didn't think John was legit or didn't think it was legit? You're like, is this guy legit? And I was like, oh. No, definitely me. Isaac, you're definitely legit. It had to be about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I don't. I only contact maybe half as many people as John does. He's way better about just spamming yeah. everybody. You know, anyway. Yeah, I got uh, I got stopped by Instagram actually. So like, I I mean I don't consider it spam, right? So people like my Instagram. Posts and, yeah, like like people like my post. So I reach out. Oh, thank you for the like. Here's my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Whatever. That's not spam. But I guess I did too many in a day. It's and it's, yeah, 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 Instagram was like, you've done the same action too many times. You must stop yeah. for now. So. Well, oh, well, didn't you say you did like a hundred? You messaged like a hundred some people in a day or something That's like that. Spam, John. That's wow. Spam. That is spam. That's the working definition of spam. I, th I thought I had friends here. What happened? You've been lawyer. <laughs> lawyer said Nobody no. likes spam. Listen, the food. first of all, I said fifty to sixty. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's still spam. Uh, I mean. I will they defend. They were, they were literally all people that followed me and liked my stuff. They weren't strangers. Yeah, <laughs> and and I mean John John does put a ton of legwork into this, so I mean I oh, yeah. I can't really speak bad about it. Well, but, did, my husband even said like, <laughs> here's a little positive niceness, but he was like he said like he knows this podcast is gonna blow up. Like he's like a str total strongman nerd, like and he loves it. Like and he's like once like. The more people start listening to this, like they'll just love it. Like once they, mm -hmm. once they give it a listen. So uh, he's so nice. Yeah. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I I always learn a ton every single time we have a new episode. So I I love it too. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> But yeah, that's how I found him. Like he liked a bunch of my stuff, so I messaged yeah. him. Oh, yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Been trying to get rid of him ever since. It's like a right? tits. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What up, dog? Um, you just noticed? It's pickle. It's like, what are we doing up here? I want to move up. <laughs> Hi, pickle. Oh, my God. She's just running around and just slamming all over me. <laughs> does the dog uh, do that... any uh, strongman competitions? Or... You know, she does a few. Basically, she's in the canine. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> The canine division probably gets paid more than we do at this fucking point. But that's just mm -hmm. Probably. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Tell her. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Pickle can't fly or she would come with me. Did you know pugs can't get on airplanes for the most part? Because of their breathing, basically. They suck <laughs> Yeah. So, I know that, right? A lot of the, if they haven't had, like, a, the pug surgery, they actually can't go with you on an airplane. So, I know. Terrible. That is... Not at all part of this conversation. Relevant. Sorry. Right. Nope. <laughs> no. Everybody's like, wow, that's... Random so that pug means. knows that. <laughs> Can you travel by train all your... All your right? <laughs> and they're all like, I don't know how to get out of this now. Just, yeah. How do we segue <laughs> well, away from pug snoots? How do we move away from this? No, I actually learned recently, I mean, probably everybody knows this and I'm just stupid, but I learned recently that when you get on a plane and they pressurize it, they don't pressurize it to sea level. Like you're still, you still feel like you're at about 8,000 feet. Yeah. Hmm. No, I had no idea about this that. Is great. I didn't know <laughs> that. It depends on the kind of plane too. Like the, the, uh, the 787 is all carbon fiber. So that one you feel like you're at three or 4,000 because it can, it can hold better pressure, but every other plane it's like 8,000 feet. Huh. Thank you for sharing. Hey, listen, you go off topic, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. They used to not pressurize them at all. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That had all yeah, sorts of problems. You can breathe, you just to come down. 
By the way, I, Isaac, I don't know if you want to open that Pandora's box. Je Jessica was an air traffic controller, so it might get what? a big story here. Oh, there yeah. you go. Hey, I've been in the Navy that. for several years, and uh, so well, I, cool. I specialize in sub hunting now, so it's a little okay. bit. I worked with helicopters a bunch. Well, so. That's fun. Yeah, I was. Fun, Jessica. Jessica. Hey, you've done everything. You've been a butcher. You've been an air All traffic stuff. controller. Wow. <laughs> All the stuff. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, all trades. She, was, she wasn't actually a butcher, but everyone called her yeah, a salsa a sausage, and that's just what I thought <laughs> before I met her. I thought they called her that because she was like legitimately a butcher. <laughs> yeah, Haley couldn't figure out why everyone was calling her that. Yeah, I was like, why does everyone keep calling her that? And I'm like, oh, she must be a butcher, and like she's not her like specialty. Like, wow, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were the days, right? Took about two seconds of meeting her to be like, no. she's clearly no. not a butcher. <laughs> it's something else. No, that's not it. That's not right. Uh, that's fine. By the way, not to not to gloss over it, Jessica. Thank you for putting in a good word with whoever that was. Yeah, we'll just we'll just ignore all that that happened. You can probably take that out actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, that you don't want to be known as being nice. Right. Wow. Number of people that were like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" I was like, "I don't know." I am <laughs> Talk, talking about your connections, we got to get Kale on one of these days. Yeah, what's he doing? Oh yeah, he's great yeah. fun for this. He'll really tell you what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think we're probably going to wrap up some, uh, you know, pretty soon here. Any other topics, everybody? Anyone wanted to cover before we wrap it up? Cover a lot. No, you let me shamelessly self promote. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> she just wanted to use you and throw you away. <laughs> well, I don't know about throw away, but <laughs> you know, yeah, no, no, this is fun. Man. Yeah, no. What, what's what's the to make two American friends in what a year and a month now? Yeah. No. Are you still on? Um, are you still not allowed to cross the border for the thing that we can't talk about? Yeah, still no. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can there. fly, so I. You have to quarantine. Is that how it is? Do you have to quarantine if you fly? Yeah, but the quarantining part's not a big deal for me because I work from home anyway. But, yeah. So that part's not a big deal. But yeah. Ew, that's still a mess. Yeah. <laughs> thing. yeah. All right. Anybody else want to plug anything before we go? Feel free. Um, I have a Facebook page for all the strong, strong wind ladies. If anybody wants to go check it out, there's lots of good conversations and memes and shit. It's called Women of Strong Man. Okay. Uh, say the yeah. name again, sorry. Uh, Women of Strong Man. Cool. It's an awesome page, actually, legit. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Isaac, anything else you wanted to talk about? Get any good any good videos coming out that people should know about? Um, well, I got my interview with JF. Um, I'm still working on that series of you know the origins of strongman powerlifting uh all that sort of stuff um uh yeah mostly mostly school though S between between school my two kids and my wife like somehow i don't really have a lot of free time i'm not yeah. sure yeah. not sure how it works <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's like strange. Most, most of my classes aren't bad, but I've never done physics before, and doing physics for the first time when you're 30 years old online with no access yeah. to tutors is a horrible idea. I oh mean, my god! Yeah, I was like, so I'm always Bro. trying to like look up YouTube videos on stuff yeah. and like figure out. Oh how yeah, to do that's it. a good idea. Wow, yeah. man. It, yeah. Sounds like not a lot of fun. No, so. No. I'm trying to still make YouTube videos, though. If anyone is still paying attention to my channel, every now and then I put a new one up. So <laughs> you did a lot on Wuss, though. So don't uh, discredit yourself too much. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that took a lot of time too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I have my interview with uh, Sam and Maxime coming out soon. So keep your eyes out for that. And uh, I guess even though they haven't announced the events yet, I'm going to do uh, some videos on World's Strongest Man predictions. And uh, we'll give Brian Shaw a little more credit. He has announced the events and seems much more organized. So I'll do some uh, predictions for him as well. And uh, I heard, Jessica, Jessica, I was reading that you were doing predictions on World's Strongest Man. So, I, you know, you don't know the events. You did it. So I'll do the same. 
Yeah, well, Barbend asked me for my predictions, and I basically put them all on a dartboard. And so then I started like just throwing shit at things. <laughs> and I came up with, weirdly enough, it was more or less, you know, whatever happened last year. But I'm just saying that the darts have never been wrong. So yeah, I, I, said, I don't really remember. Wow. It's guaranteed. So if you, you know, sounds sciencey. Like scientific. Yeah. Like, Science you know, as fuck. It's yeah. like six minutes of like elbow, you know, popping and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. I put my predictions in the hat. No, I, I literally was like, I was watching like different people were doing predictions and I'm thinking like the events aren't even out. How are they doing this? Then I saw Jessica did it. I'm like, well, she's cool. If she did it, I'll do it too. <laughs> you mean you're supposed to know what the events are before you randomly pick people? That's weird. I didn't know. Yeah. You're not supposed, you're supposed to pick whoever you think is the coolest. I just one that I yeah, like a popularity <laughs> contest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So who'd, who'd you end up picking? I forgot. I don't know. I just said that. <laughs> oh, I don't funny. fucking know. Um, actually, uh, Novikov is probably going to be pretty hard to beat. I mean, honestly, yeah, he's just. So, yeah. so, I mean, that's kind of how I, my predictions, I think, ended up in that general realm. Um, but it's so unrounded and has so little weakness that it's hard yeah. to even imagine that the events being announced yeah. can change that. Like, yeah. 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 So he's yeah. been, I mean, he's pretty amazing to watch right now at this point. So I don't know of anyone. A lot of the people got are getting still getting hurt. So, you know, some of these other athletes, I think um, Helikowski's like his tricep is all jacked up again and that kind of thing. So a lot of the people that are my favorite that I root for are um, already out. So um, I can't imagine anyone beating Novikov at this point. But yeah. yeah. The dark board yeah, Matei's, Matei's, Matei's is out for Worlds. He's, he's going to yeah, go to Shaw. Though. I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah going to I, JF might uh JF might do well though. It'd be yeah. nice. To oh, we all yeah. yeah. That's my <laughs> pick. I will be the <laughs> I will be the token Canadian and make him my prediction. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm with you. I'm with you. Every, every I'm year. With you. Like, wow, <laughs> Jessica. I love it. It. Avery's phone. That's special. <laughs> That's Avery's phone. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking J JF is probably. I mean, if you follow the pattern, he's probably going to be second this year. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he got second last year, so I think this year he's supposed to be first. No, so. wasn't he? He was he was third last year, but second at Shaw. I he was third last year. Oh, that's right. Never mind. Yeah. Oh well. Okay, fine. He'll be second. <laughs> <laughs> I was so disappointed with uh, with Wuss World Ultimate Strongman. All my predictions, except for like three of them, I was off by one place. So oh, just, that's the worst. Flip. <laughs> oh so, man! And I like I I you know went through and tried to calculate all the events and everything, and I ended up having JF winning it, and then Alexi won it, and and so I had those two flipped, um, and then everyone else was flipped right below it, and so they're all off by one place, and I was like, yeah, yeah. It's still, <laughs> it's still. Nope. like when you so miss you that, when you when you skip one on the multiple choice, so every single answer is wrong. Not that I've ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are off just barely. But. Yeah. Oh, I, I used to. I used to always use the abacadabra methodology. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I mean, I think Maxime's going to do really well because JF told me he is, so I believe him. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The internet told me it's true. <laughs> yeah, he said he told me uh, when I interviewed Maxime. He said he's working up to a 500 stone soon. So. Holy. Wow. Shit. Well, yeah. yeah <laughs> been training with like a 440 something for reps or something like that yeah i think i think he told me he's over 470 for one now that's crazy, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 and then the other one uh ivars i think is gonna do well as well yeah i think he, he keeps doing better so cool all right well uh we had a great time with uh the three of you yeah, any last crazy. words before Thanks we kind of having us Anytime, anytime. Yeah, you anytime you want. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, you have a you have a platform anytime you want it. Uh, so, for everybody watching, remember like this stream, subscribe to my blog, Strongest Man. Go over to Isaac's Hunger Smash Fitness Channel and subscribe there as well. Um, follow all of our guests on Instagram, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.